Today we are talking about complex positioning and seating with Sandy from Rehab Engineering Clinic. Welcome Sandy. Thanks Joss, it's lovely to be here. It's great that the AT community is so interested in this topic. Please, fire away with your questions. Fantastic. Well, so starting with the basics, why is seating and postural supports so important on wheelchairs? Um, seating and postural support is important for a couple of reasons. One is for comfort, so that the person in the chair is comfortable, um, to reduce the risk of developing uneven posture in the future, and also for appropriate pressure management. Yeah. So we want to um, also make sure that somebody is stable so that they can use their upper limbs to perform tasks that they want to, such as or need to, such as propelling the wheelchair, eating, using a computer, those sorts of things. Being upright also means that somebody um, can see their environment a lot better and it helps with other body systems such as digestion and um, breathing. Yep. Fantastic. Good, good, good background. Um, so there seems to be many uh, different sorts of cushions and backrests out there um, and the materials are really vast. So what does seating usually comprise of and what are some of the common materials that um, are used? Well, I guess when people think of seating, they automatically think of cushions and backrests, which mm. is definitely an important part of um, seating and support. Yep. But also need to look at head support, arm rests, leg rests, foot plays, those sorts of things as well to give the best symmetrical posture mm. as possible. So backrests as a rule will be made from a fairly firm base, such as plastic, a hard plastic or metal, mm -hmm. and then with a, a foam overlay for comfort and pressure management. And cushions will tend to be made either from um, foams of various densities or air or gel and quite often a combination of these materials. Fantastic. And you know, what would make someone's uh, postural seating um, requirements complex? Um, yeah. How does it kind of get bumped up? Well, I guess um, some people that are in their, their wheelchairs are sitting in um, the mobility devices for up to 16 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So we need to be making sure that they're well and truly posturally supported, mm -hmm. but we also need to make sure that pressure management is um, accounted for as well. So one of the risks of sitting for such a period of time and being unable to move um, without assistance of somebody is the risk of developing pressure injuries. And as we know, pressure injuries can be detected, potentially life-threatening. Uh, so it's re it is really about managing um, that level of risk um, associated with prolonged sitting. And, Absolutely, uh, yeah. yeah. We want to eliminate um, any medical complications that could occur and obviously maintain quality of life for the user. Fantastic. Um, there are some very cool um, assessment tools um, available for seating prescription and I uh, recently actually got to test a few of these out, uh, one of these out first hand with um, pressure mapping with yeah. you. Um, um, so can you talk, talk us through them? Yeah. yeah. So one of the our main assessment tools that we do use, as you say, is the, the pressure mat. Mm -hmm. So we'll use that to look at um, how somebody's posture is affected and how their pressure is managed according to that postural alignment um, and trying out various cushions and seated surfaces to see what best um, provides the best pressure relief mm -hmm. and as you yourself know um, we often use it as an education purpose as well to actually have somebody visually look at how the pressure changes when somebody uses the tool function of the wheelchair so rather than us as professionals constantly nagging actually seeing that yeah. um, visually represented is often it's quite, I must say it's quite remarkable yeah. and yeah it really yeah. gives a lot of feedback that you know Absolutely. I had never had until I, I yeah, did that assessment. Cool. So. so one of the other assessments mm. that we use as well is we've got an assessment wheelchair as such that has all bits and pieces attached to it so we can actually um, adjust those to provide the best symmetrical posture as well and we often use that as a base for moulding our custom made cushions as well ah. so that we've got that symmetrical position while we're doing the moulding. Fantastic. And can you give some um, examples of other custom-made rehab um, devices that Rehab Engineering Clinic has um, made for build with complex um, postural sure. seating? Yeah. Um, we make a lot of um, foam cushions, so mm -hmm. we'll make them according to the individual specific measurements. So we want to try and transfer the pressure over small surface areas onto a larger surface area so that um, we can reduce the risk of developing pressure injuries. Yep. We also make um, custom-made backrests as well, so they'll be moulded to the individual's requirements, again for pressure distribution and for um, positioning to try and get as much support and symmetry as possible. 
We also make cushions for comfort. So we do have um, some clients at the hospital that have areas over their bottom that are sore. So we can actually custom make that and scoop out the areas so that we can give them some relief. And one of the other areas that we've had is for some of our clients that are on extended bed rest, so such as patients that have come in for surgery, um, post-pressure injury, and they need to be lying on their stomach for mm. extended periods. Mm -hmm. We've made a custom-made contoured mattress, I guess, oh. as such. Yeah. And then being in the hospital, it means that we can actually modify that quickly as needs be. That's fantastic. Um, it seems like you know you sort of look at everything from all angles, and I guess our AT community are quite curious about um, the length of time um, that these sorts of things take. You know, from start to finish. Um, you know, what what's an anticipated sort of time yeah. frame? Um, for a custom made cushion, I guess we'd have an initial appointment, which would take an hour to an hour and a half, I guess, to yeah. work out the individual measurements and to take the mould. Yeah. Um, our very skilled technicians there need to put that um, information into a computer program that could take mm, two to five hours, depending on complexity. And then that program is then transferred into our router, which carves the cushion independently. And again, depending on complexity, four to six hours. We'll then have a final fitting appointment, do any modifications that need to be done. And if we need to get a custom made cover, then we've got to get an upholstery to do that. So from where to go, three to four hours? Three, three to four weeks? weeks. weeks. <laughs> weeks. Not hours, weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weeks. yeah. Okay, so that's good to kind of, uh, and you know, uh, to consider when yeah. you're getting it done. Yeah. Um, so when you when would you choose a commercial seating system versus a custom made um, seating system? Or can you kind of do a little bit of a mix? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll tend to um, try and go with a commercially available product whenever possible. Okay. Um, just so that if it needs to be replaced in the future, that's easily done, because obviously custom making stuff can take a lot of time and effort. Yeah. So even if we have to modify a custom-made product, a, a commercial-made product, we will do. Um, if there's nothing commercially available, then we look at custom making. And sometimes we might include some components of a commercial product into the custom product, so like a gel pad or something like that, into a backrest or a cushion. Okay, yeah. yeah, great. And then at what point would an AT user seek um, a custom service like rehab um, engineering clinic versus, say, a, you know, a regular yep. seating um, specialist? You know, can you talk us through the difference? Sure. I guess one of the main differences um, between rehab engineering clinic and um, some of the other seating um, services is that we've got a multitude of skilled professionals. So we're very lucky that we've got occupational therapists, nurses, rehab engineers and skilled technicians from a variety of backgrounds. So um, we can custom make a lot of stuff. We have a workshop there, we have the skills, we have access to the materials as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and we've also got a lot of stock of commercial cushions and backrests as well. So we can often fit those within an initial appointment or quite quickly rather than relying on suppliers to be able to get that equipment trial so is is an yeah. access yeah. Um, okay so with our final question let's finish with uh, funding I guess with funding weighing heavily on the minds of many AT users yeah. um, how would one access and pay for a service such as yours yeah yeah you're quite correct at the moment mm -hmm. it's a time of significant change with the NDIS rolling out across WA mm -hmm. I guess my advice would be to contact the rehab engineering clinic to discuss your individual needs we see um, clients that are inpatients, outpatients, NDIS funded, equa funded privately, so a vast array. So certainly contact us and then we can arrange a quote to the appropriate um, funding body and take it from there. We recognise that everyone's different situations, so we need to come up with a customised approach. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Sandy, for your time and knowledge about complex positioning and seating with us AT users uh, here at Chat. Um, yeah, if you'd like to find out more, the details will be in the links below about rehab engineering. And yeah, we look forward to uh, further chats in the future. Thanks very much. Thanks. See you, everyone.